Welcome everyone. I'm Phil Siddle. I'm the Assistant General Secretary um, of the NHBT with responsibility for the regions and nations. Um, just going to uh, take you through um, some information about uh, annual conference um, uh, through this webinar. Um, it's scheduled for up to an hour. Um, depending on how many questions you have, it may take uh, less time than that. Or, or, but we will make sure that it have, uh, closes within the hour period. Uh, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat uh, and feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar. Uh, if you want to ask questions, put them in the Q&A box, preferably, um, but you're welcome to put them in the chat as well, and I will try and pick them up. But just prompt me if I miss your question in the chat, that's the only thing I'll say. Um, this uh, webinar today is to try and make sure that people have as many uh, ways as possible of accessing information about conference. You may also be aware that there's going to be a first time elected representatives meeting at conference, uh, which is going to take place uh, next, uh, well, this Thursday at 4 p.m. And I'll, I'll let you know a bit more detail about that. And you're welcome to join that as well. Uh, some of the content will, will overlap very much with what we're covering today, but it is obviously nice to meet other first time representatives. So you are welcome to attend that. Uh, we just wanted to do something uh, virtually because of the nature of conference and how people attend. It's quite possible that when we get to the weekend, some people will be traveling on Thursday night and didn't want people not to have the opportunity to attend a briefing about how conference works. Um, so um, do let me know. Um, some of you, I recognize the odd name from the attendees. So some of you may not be first time representatives, but you're, you're very welcome still um, into this session. But if you are a first time representative, do, do please feel free to. Uh, say hi and say do ask questions throughout throughout the the um, session. I'm going to use a presentation to go through, and then I'll, I'll try and whiz through that a bit, really. Um, and I might pause for questions. If people come up with questions as we go through, I will pause and take them. Uh, otherwise, I'll leave some time at the end for questions. So I'm just going to go into the presentation. So um, yeah, just this is going to cover a bit about how you get the most out of annual conference. And it's probably worth saying that. Um, a lot of it covers how our democ democracy works, because obviously you need to understand how the debates work in order to, to take part in those. So that's what we'll be covering, but also some information more about the particular to this, this conference in Glasgow. And I will show you as well the way that you access most information. We had quite a uh, well, considerable, the biggest change certainly in my time here in the last 15 years. Um, last year, when we moved to all of our conference documentation and all of the accessibility being through um, electronic devices. Uh, it makes the information much more kind of agile and easy to access, cuts down on paper. Um, and we also have won sustainability awards actually for our conference based on the move that we made to, to digital. Um, so I'll let you know how you access that as well. So just to start, um, I hope you know this, but what is conference? It's the annual meeting of the NHBT and it is the supreme decision-making body of the union. There isn't a higher decision-making body within the NHBT. Uh, and yourselves as elected representatives come together over Easter to make the decisions that will set the policy and priorities for the NHBT over the coming year. Uh, in between conferences, our national executive, who you elect, do um, obviously make policy decisions and carry out the, the decisions of the conference. But ultimately, our, our priorities are set by conference on an annual basis. Um, what does it do and how does it set that policy? It receives and considers various reports and there will be reports that are debated at conference that I'll come to give some examples of. Um, it debates motions um, and determines policy and I'll take you through some of those and how that's debated. It decides on rules of the union. Normally that's a kind of footnote uh, if there's a rule change. Obviously this year that's quite a big uh, focus of conference because there has been a rule rule conference that's been added onto the first day and come on to that with the the um, order of the uh, debate but yeah the whole of Friday will be focused on debating rule changes which will either fill you with absolute excitement and joy or fill you with slight uh, concern about how that will work but it will be interesting but in the first day we'll focus on our, our own rules and finally it disseminates information so a huge amount of stuff that we work on comes out over conference around campaigns around information surveys of members but a real chance to engage with members, not just the people sat in the conference hall, but on a wider basis than that through social media and through the press. Uh, what roles does everyone have at conference? So um, the elected representatives, and I assume most of you are, but I will, in case any of you are observers, I'll cover that as we go through. But elected representatives elected um, by local association to attend, you're there to engage in the debate, so you can speak in the debate over policy, um, you can vote in those uh, and then afterwards um, hopefully report back to your wider membership and your local associations. 
The national officers um, are there with national executive. They're there to report on the activity that they undertook on your behalf in 2022, and that's through the mechanism of the annual report and the financial statements. They're there to introduce some motions that have been put forward by executive, and they're there to engage in the debate themselves and to vote like yourselves as, as um, members of the NHBT. Staff like myself, uh, we're there to organise conference in the broadest terms, so there are people who, who are there um, making sure that everything runs smoothly, that the uh, sessions uh, run on time, make sure that there's everything from you know food being available at lunch all the way through to people running fringe sessions, debates outside of the conference hall, um, essentially making sure conference runs. But we're not there to speak. So with the exception of the general secretary, um, the who's obviously elected, um, the uh, staff don't speak at conference or get involved in debates. What we do uh, after conference is we also implement the policy decisions that you make um, between conferences. And that and you'll see colleagues there from uh, our national centres, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, uh, as well as all of our regional uh, centres in England and many staff from headquarters as well. And we'll have a number of staff there from our Scotland centre with it being held in Glasgow. What do you need for conference? Um, you need the agenda that takes you through when the debates will happen and everything that's happening over the weekend. Uh, I will visit these uh, in, a, in a moment in more detail. There's a, a conference guide uh, which you can access and I'll take you through that. Uh, the financial statements, I'm not planning to take you through. That's the job of the honorary treasurer at conference. Um, it's also not the most, it, it, it's, you have to, if you enjoy stats, you'll enjoy it, you enjoy reading and financial statements. But obviously it's really important that we report on the finances of the NHBT over the previous year, and that includes the, the audited accounts, um, and they are uh, voted or, or not. They're accepted at conference or not in one of the sessions. The annual report covers all of the activity that's taken place on behalf of members over the previous year. And again, that's voted on and debated at conference. Uh, the minutes of conference are in there just as a record of the decisions that were taken last year. The rules of the union you do need uh, and the standing orders of conference simply because they govern how conference uh, works. If it is your first conference, then I'm not suggesting you read those unless you've got particularly bad problems with insomnia. Um, but uh, some of you, I quite like rules of the conference union, but most people aren't that interested in them. But there are key things you need to be aware of, but I'm going to take you through those. Uh, but you do need to know where to find them. And there are people around staff who can help if you've got any questions about how conference runs. So how do you access those? Well, as I said, in the in, in years, years gone by, you had... Um, absolute tomes of uh, materials that you would carry around a uh, conference with you but now all of this is accessible um, at your fingertips um, through the annual conference app and it's just at that point I think I will I'll take you into the app to have a look around uh, because that will give you everything you need for conference just let me change sharing and if you haven't download, downloaded the app yet, I would recommend you do. Uh, information's gone out with the instructions, but you can also get them on the NHPT website. So if you go to the website and the annual conference page, you'll find details of how to download the app. It will work on um, an iOS device, like an iPhone, or an Android device, if you say got a Samsung, or you can access it through the web app. I actually think the, le the least ex exciting is the web app. Although that's the one that I'm going to demonstrate to you because it's the best one. It's obviously the one I can share screen with. Um, so I will just demonstrate how that works. Now, when you go into the application, into the app, you'll have a login screen, regardless of whether you've used it before, it will take you to a login screen. If you go onto a different platform, like the, the web interface, you put in your name and email address, and it will generate a code to your email address. It doesn't, if you can't find it arriving, I, I've registered for two of the platforms so far, this and the iPhone. Uh, and, and actually Samsung or three of them, it, it, it comes through within, for me, 30 seconds. So if you haven't got it within a few minutes, check your junk, junk folders um, and you just put that verification code in and it will take you through to the, the app. So when you come in, this is my um, interface, you'll see that you've got various cards and uh, various publications that you can access. So all those documents I just referred to are accessible through the um through the app and it's the same on your on, on any phone or mobile device. So I'm not going to take you into the standing orders or rules, um, but what I will take you into is the agenda. I am sharing the whole Google Chrome screen, but if anyone can't see anything, please just shout in the chat if at any point you can't see what I'm referring to. 
because uh, I don't know what you can say, but it looks like hopefully you can see the conference agenda. So you've got that in there, and that will take you through the schedule of all the session, sessions at conference. And I will I will give you a highlight of these in a minute, but it's got all the, the texts in of the motions that will be debated as well. So they're all in that, that booklet. So I'm going to come back to the agenda. You've also got the financial statements and the annual report will be in here. The conference next exhibition guide I referred to is there. And they all they're all PDFs. They all display easily on any on a uh, tablet or or, or a mobile device. And in this, you've got various maps of the conference guide's good for looking at the local area, maps of where different rooms are. There's an at a glance guide to different sessions, a, a more user friendly way of finding your way around uh, the conference, so to speak. Whereas the the actual um, agenda itself is literally the motions and um, and the debates that are going to happen. Um, so the conference guide's good to have a read through before you. Attend. Also in the conference app, um, you've got um, so the ability to mark what sessions you want to attend. Um, obviously, with debate sessions, hopefully you'll be in all of them. Um, but for example, if on Thursday you want to attend all sessions, sorry, you want to attend um, the getting the most out of conference sessions, so the physical version of this, you can add them on your phone. You can just add them to like your own diary schedule of what you're doing. Um, and you can do the same with various um, well-being sessions. So if you want to go to the session about creating calm on the Friday lunchtime, which after a morning of rules debate is possible, um, you can add that to your own schedule. So if you go through those, they are so you can add any of those sessions as you see fit. So we have caucuses for members of underrepresented groups. So if you identify as a disabled teacher and want to network with other members who identify as disabled, you could add that to your schedule. And all it does is it then has you have your own personal schedule then, which you can go back to at any point um, that brings them together. So I can see we've been joined by Chris uh, Weavers. Chris, do you want to just take a moment and introduce yourself? Yeah, and in doing so, apologies for being late. It's got to that time of day that if I haven't broken down, my, my laptop has. It took a bit of encouraging to get back online again. So apologies for that. But, uh, Chris Weavers, National Official Campaigns and Communications. Thanks, Chris. And I know Chris is the expert on the um, conference apps as well. So uh, do, do, do come in. I'll just finish off by saying that uh, you've got the list of exhibitors who have been in the exhibition hall um, there. And you've also got a list of all of the speakers. Um, if you want to see who's running a session, then you can find more details out on those. So I know, for example, the Calm session is being run by Dave Reed. Um, so it tells you it's running two sessions and you get a bit of detail about him. Similarly, you've actually got all the attendees are listed on here. So you can look for other representatives from your local association. Um, some of you have already put pictures in uh, here. Many people won't. It depends on whether you registered for the app. So um, if you have got a picture on there, you clearly know the app quite well because you've already got your photo up. Uh, and just to say there's the game as well, which I have not played, but there's, um, as well as being able to message other people, the community aspects, the game, I think you, by doing things on the app, you score points, Chris? That's right. And um, I think we have a night away in a hotel as the, as the prize uh, this year, I think at the Crown Plaza in Stratford. Uh, so well worth, worth doing. Stratford, Warwickshire, not Stratford East London, by the way. But yeah, it, but basically, the more you do on the app, more points you get. And if people max out, then we'll do a, a prize draw. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Um, and yeah, and so have a look around the app. Um, I'm really keen to do that before you get there. You'll also get things like expenses forms, details about the awards, various information. So a whole range of stuff there that you could engage in. So I'm just going to stop sharing that and go back to the presentation briefly. So, yeah. um, so in terms of how you participate then in conference, um, as a member, you can attend the private sessions. That doesn't relate to whether you're a elected representative who's been elected to take part in debates and vote or whether you're an observer from a local association. As long as you are an HPT member, you can attend those sessions. Um, just to say, we encourage people to have the debate on, well, have the debate in hall, don't have the debate on Twitter or Facebook, but obviously to share the news about some of what's happening at the conference on social media, in the private sessions, don't do that, because those are where debates happen that are potentially sensitive to the NHPT or about, about um, issues that we wouldn't necessarily want publicised more widely. So, for example, 
Um, there are there are private sessions over the uh, weekend. Um, I think our financial statements are taken in private session as well, for example, because of sensitive information. So in those, don't use social media or take take photos or recording equipment. Um, in the public sessions, you can do that as much as you wish um, and, and stream that stuff outside of the hall. The public sessions, as well as NHT members, whether they're representatives or observers, they're also guests. So we have guests from um, sister trade unions around the world. We have members of the press that will be there reporting on the conference uh, and potentially members of the public as well will come and sit in the observers gallery. It does happen occasionally. People are in the area. I'm trying to think. The, the Glasgow, yeah, the SEC is fairly central to Glasgow. It particularly happens when we've got a city centre uh, conference. Um, so it's possible that there'll be members of the public there. Um, and also there'll be guests from other unions in the across the UK as well. So from sister trade unions in, in the UK. Um, the elected representatives, so if you're there to vote, make sure you sit on the ground floor of the hall. If you're an observer, you would sit on the first floor. Just important, if you decide to go and sit on the first floor, maybe with other observers from your association or because that's the door you've come in on after grabbing a coffee, then your votes won't be counted in the observer gallery. So you just need to be aware that for your votes to count, you need to be on the ground floor. I think I've got, yeah, hopefully you can see that there's a plan there of the doors and how you get in. It, it, until you go to the hall, it's a bit meaningless, but it's in the, it's on the conference app as well. But as you, you've got, essentially got a voting area on the ground floor, and then you've got a first floor area um, where people will sit to observe. How do you participate in conference then individually? Um, you can get involved in the debate, so you can move a motion or second one. So that's putting a motion to the floor of conference. If you were going to do that, you would know about that by now. Um, so I suggest if you don't know about that, then, you, then you're not likely to. Um, you can speak for a motion, uh, so that's in favour of it, or you can speak against it if you don't agree. You can also speak to a motion. So if you want to make a point, maybe a technical point, or you don't haven't formed a view on whether you're going to vote for against it, sorry, for against a motion, you can just speak to it. Um, you vote on motions. You also vote on any amendments that are made to those motions and you vote on the reports to conference, so the annual report and the financial statements, for example. You can attend various fringe and soundbite sessions. They happen outside the formal conference sessions. They happen at lunchtime um, and at the end of the day, and we'll touch on those in a minute. There's an exhibition area you can explore and there's various activities, not just exhibitors. There's other things that we'll come to that are on, um, that happen in that area. Uh, and also you can engage in social media, so you can you can pick up various things, particularly if you can't attend a fringe meeting, you may find that you can catch up later on on, on social media around those. I've seen questions start to come in, so I'll pick those up at a natural uh, break in a moment. This is the bit that is a little bit technical, I guess, and if you've not been to conference before, um, all, all democratic conferences are run, are governed by some standing orders, and they set out the parameters for how conference is debated. So, so essentially, there are 20 motions that will go to conference to be debated. Um, six of those are set. What do I mean by those? The six highest balloted motions, and some of you may have took part in that ballot, um, the, the members voted for to be debated by conference, they are placed at a set point in the agenda. And the next slide makes that a bit clearer. The other 14 motions are just debated then in order of, of how many people voted for them to be debated. But knowing when those 14 motions are going to be debated, you have to kind of follow or, or keep a note um, of when of where we've got to in the order. And I'll, I'll give an example of that in a moment. The 2B motion is the motion that's set by, um, will be proposed by executive um, to deal with um, essentially emergency items that need to come to, an, to the agenda or to bring a motion to the agenda on the eve of conference, often used to set the key priorities moving forward for the NHBUT, but that's also in the gift of the National Executive. Um, so it's a motion that's put um, after the normal uh, timeframes for motion submissions are done. So that'll be debated. The 2C motions is a motion, are motions put forward by each of the devolved nations um, from their con brought forward from their uh, conferences to be debated on the floor of um, annual conference. So there'll be a Wales, a Scotland, and Northern Ireland motion. Again, that's in the, the next slide on the agenda. And an annual report and financial statements I've mentioned. Hopefully, people can see that. This is inside, this is at the front of the conference agenda, and it's the easiest way to at a glance see uh, when different debates are happening. So you'll see that on the Friday, uh, which is all in private session, so it's in a different agenda because it's part of the rules conference, there is the rules taking place, uh, rules debate. So in the morning, there's a lunch period, 
and then in the afternoon. Um, also in that private session, there is the annual account uh, and appointment of auditors, membership assurer, which I think you have to do for legal reasons. Um, I'll talk afterwards about the welcome contraption. Then on Saturday, so what you'll see, um, there's a private session if needed in the morning. Then there's the opening ceremony where the president um, and all the presidential inauguration happens uh, and the new president uh, takes up office and speaks to conference. There's another private session then with the general secretary making a private address. And following that, the 2B motion is being held in private this year. That is not always the case, but this year, um, because of the content and potential contents of the TV motion, it will be a private debate as well. The public sessions start the afternoon. And just to give you an example, the first set motion is that one there, which is list, uh, entitled Trade Union Rights and the Right to Strike. So that motion debate will happen. A, de a motion can be debated for up to an hour. Um, many aren't. Many are much briefer than that, but they can be before they're ruled out of time. And just say, Phil, what that signifies is that motion received when we balloted members and they had a chance to prioritise the debates to be debated at conference, the motions to be debated, that motion got far greater support than any of the other options out there, which is where, why it appears so high up the priorities on the agenda. Thanks for that, Chris. And then after that, after the trade union um, right to right strike set motion, it will go into those 14 motions in order. So it literally just works through them in the order they're printed in the conference agenda. Uh, I appreciate people will probably not have the conference agenda open at the moment uh, to look at those, uh, but I'll give an example. I give an example when I can get the conference agenda open. So, um, probably just get to the first one. So, in that booklet, it has all of those motions listed. The things like they're about uh, access to housing for teachers, particularly young teachers. There's things around funding for SEN settings, um, around misogyny, uh, period poverty, all sorts of uh, motions that are categorised into six different areas uh, around uh, training and organising, pay and pensions, education, equalities, uh, social, economic and international issues and health and safety is the sixth category to make sure we get a good spread of the issues that affect our members. Thanks, Chris. And I've got them. Yeah, thank you. I was going to get the document to uh, scroll down. So the first one is adequate funding for behaviour support. That'll be debated. If that ends up taking an hour, they might get on to full time teachers for part time pay. Uh, and then after that, that may be the only other session they get into this two till five thirty public session on the Saturday. However, if the debates are uh, quicker than, than that, they may get through more of those motions. Bearing in mind, they also did the Northern Ireland motion in that session. So if you if you plan to speak on one of the balloted motions, uh, you'll need to keep an, an, an ear out for where they've got to, to know roughly where that will happen over the weekend. You can always ask a different, different colleagues or different stands or be able to tell you where they've got to on the agenda. But it's just being mindful that if it's not a set motion, if it's if title's not listed here, then it will, they'll just run through an order depending on pace. If you want to speak on one of the set motions, like abolish Ofsted on Monday, that will be between 9am and 11am on Monday. It will be taken as the first motion. So it's going to debate roughly 9am until 10am, if that's how long it runs for. So it's just understanding that in terms of the programme. Um, and conference will end by 1.30 on Monday at the latest. I'm going to pick out some of the other things on the programme as we go through. Like. Just to say, Phil, I, think, I don't know if you picked it up, but there's a question about if the public want to come in. Um, yeah, they just go to registration and they can get any, any person can get accreditation to attend one of our public sessions. And then just say, I have given everybody the ability to speak. It's a relatively small group. So if people do have questions, given it's uh, a relatively small group, you might just want to come in. Thanks for that, Chris. So do, if, you, if you want to ask your question, do, do by all means signal. Um, so how do you get to speak? Um, you need to decide, first of all, if you're going to speak in favour of a motion, against it. We do actually have a question from Nicola. Oh, yeah. Hi, first time, not sure. Which private sessions do you attend as a delegate? Do you choose? Do you do them all? Does your, um, does your delegation tell you which ones they need you for? Obviously the Scotland ones. Um, yeah, 
Thanks, Nicola. Uh, I would attend with the, with the sessions that happen between 9 and 12.30 and 2 to 5.30, the, the main debate sessions. I would attend all the private sessions. So on Friday is a rules conference um, and it will all be about the NHPT rules. Um, and that will be relevant to the whole of the NHPT, um, all nations as well. Um, equally so do attend those private sessions as long as you're an HPT member obviously you are an HPT member then then attend the private sessions but the one on Saturday morning which is around the 2B motion again that's about um, setting the priorities for the whole NHPT going forward so I'd encourage you to attend all of those sessions at lunchtime and after after the uh, conference formally finishes at 5 30 completely optional um, but within the debating sessions, try and, I mean, you do need breaks and you can get a coffee <laughs> uh, and so on at different points, but do try and attend as many of those as you can. And the private sessions are, are open completely to all uh, energy team members, representatives and observers. Does that help? Cool. Yeah, yes, thanks. Yes, Brilliant. thanks. Thanks, Nicola. Um, so with the how you get to speak, decide how you're going to speak on a motion, first of all, if you've got other people from your local association who've been to conference before, they'll give you advice about speaking. Uh, you you basically on your app uh, request a speaking card, so there's a button to speak and you fill in the it's a form that you fill in and send to um, the standing orders committee. Um, just to, basically telling them what motion it is you want to speak on and whether you want to speak for or against or to it. There's also a box to tick if you're a first time attendee or first time speaker at conference. If you tick that, there's a greater chance you'll be called. Presidents have always favoured trying to give people a chance to speak at conference who haven't spoken before. I should add it's completely in the president's gift who speaks. President will call people and will generally try and ensure some balance and balance in the debate. So if 20 people want to speak in favour of a motion and no one wants to speak against it, um, or one person wants to speak against this, for example, then it, it's possible that not everyone speaking for will get called because there's only an hour to debate the, the motion in total. Um, but we'll call a variety of speakers. Often we'll call a first time a first time speaker. Um, so yeah, to so complete the form, prepare your speech, um, seek advice on that if you need to from from other other representatives, and then be ready and in the hall when the motion is debated. If you're not in the hall when you call to speak, then you miss the opportunity to speak, which is what again while saying to keep an eye on on the debate. Um, when a motion starts, so for example, if you're going to speak um, on the motion on uh, specialist provision, uh, when that motion starts, the people who are who have put cards in will generally move to the front row of the seating area in front of the stage. So you'll see that happen as debates and motions happen, uh, motions come through and debates happen. People move to that front row and it's reserved for speakers. It just means that if you are called, you can get to the podium within 30 seconds rather than potentially being at the back of the hall and it's slowing conference business down. So when the motion is announced, go to the front seats and be ready to speak then. In terms of the rules about speaking, um, as I assume that no one here is moving a motion or seconding one, you'll see that you have eight minutes and five minutes respectively to do that. It's probably just worth mentioning that if, you, if someone is moving the annual report, they have much longer. So don't shout out after eight minutes, why is the uh, the move of the annual report speaking for 15? They have 20 minutes from, from recollection. So moving those reports is a much bigger introduction. But Same otherwise- Financial statements. And the financial statements as well. Thank you, Chris. The actual other motions, eight and five minutes, every other speaker gets four minutes. So that will be um, how long you have if you speak on a motion. Um, on the rostrum, there is a, a lighting system. When you start speaking, you normally get a green light flashing. When you have one minute left, you'll get an amber light that will either be solid or it'll flash, depending on who's timekeeping and how they press the button. But essentially, it's to tell you've got a minute left. If you do get the red light, then it means you need to start because you've had your four minutes. Uh, and at that point, a bell will be rung, which tells the president that you've had your four minutes. Um, and if you're rounding up at that point, the president may let you finish up the point you're making, will the mash you to stop, it will depend on timekeeping and potentially how, how much it sounds like you've got to the end. Um, but that's again the president's gift. But you have four minutes to speak. When a motion has been debated, then a vote is called. Um, you simply hold your hand up to vote for or against um, the motion. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here about card votes because they rarely happen, other than to say that they do exist. And if a card vote is called, there's a, a standing order um, that outlines how that happens when a number of representatives rise to their feet and call for a card vote. And Chris, Chris, who's a policy knows, follow the rules inside out, is going to tell me how many, I think. 
No, um, the, the slightly different process issue. I think because we're looking at rule changes, we think there's probably a slightly higher chance of a card vote this year uh, than an average year. Because there were, those rule changes will be debated on the first day, it's in, uh, and we used to, in the pre-pandemic world, post out the, the card votes to your local association secretary. We don't now. Um, somebody from each local association will need to pick those up from registration. Uh, and because they take a long time to conduct a card vote, we won't be pausing to let everybody run out to the exhibition, get their card votes and come back. So it's important Friday morning, first thing, that you from each local association, someone has gone and picked up those a book of sort of paper votes um, in case a vote does take place. Because if you don't have them in the hall, there won't be time to go and get them and come back again. Thanks, Chris. And just so people know what a card vote is, instead of every hand counts as a vote in a normal voting conference. So if you're a very large association and only three of you are in the room at that time, you've got three votes for or against a motion or whatever you choose to vote. A card vote is where the total membership numbers of each local association are added up. So, for example, um, if you're the any town local association with uh, two and a half thousand members, as the if you do a card vote, your uh, delegation leader as such would say, I'm casting those two and a half thousand votes for this motion. Someone else may cast their 300 votes against this motion. So it essentially is using the strength of numbers of every local association, uh, which is totaled up for whether a motion is passed or fails. And just say, unusually, you can split those votes. So if the, your, the representatives of your local association are divided on the matter, you could cast 50% of your votes in favour and 50% against, you, but you have to fill in the form uh, saying this is the way we cast our votes. They don't all have to be cast in one direction. Thanks, Chris, which isn't the same in every other union I'm aware. So, yeah, it is worth 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 flagging that. Uh, I say that we haven't had a card vote. I can't recall one in the, la in the last 10 years, but it can always happen. So if those happen, the president will take you through the process as well. So so you'll be aware of what's what's happening. Um, just to say, if you're not in the hall when a vote's called, you, you can't vote. So you need to be there by when the vote happens. So just a few sessions of interest I'll highlight outside of that. And I know, I think Chris, I probably know some of the timings around these. The induction of the president, I did say that's the first uh, public session at 10 a.m. in the morning. So the president will make an inaugural speech. Um, and and uh, and then I said that that's a session, obviously, well worth attending. And after that, we'll go into private session for the 2B motion. Um, the GS is, is addressing conference during that private session. But the public address, which will be seen by the press as well, is on Sunday around midday. So leading up to the lunch period on Sunday. Uh, another session of interest, there is a welcome uh, reception um, and awards in the exhibition area on Friday at 5.30 p.m. I think that runs through till about 7 p.m. And it's worth saying that various awards are made during that to um, lay officers and lay activists for the contribution they've made during the previous Year. So, for example, a Rep of the Year Award, a Health and Safety Rep of the Year Award um, that, that will be made uh, and various various things going on during that. So well worth attending the welcome reception. We have various guest speakers. So we have um, David Edwards, who is the General Secretary of Education International, the Confederation of Education Trade Unions across the world. I think he is speaking on Saturday afternoon, immediately after lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we also have Paul Novak, the TUC General Secretary, who I think this will be his first time attending our conference in this capacity. And I think he's, I think my, my list might be slightly more out of date than yours, Chris. So do you want to run through? Yeah, so in order, it's Paul Novak who will be at the end of the, uh, what, it's just after the address, the induction of the President in that first public session. Um, so Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, immediately after lunch, will be David Edwards, General Secretary of Education International. Uh, Sunday afternoon will be Bridget Philipson, the Shadow Secretary of State for Education for England. Um, the last person we're still looking at scheduling in, um, we're trying to make diaries match, but is uh, Jenny Gilruth, who is the newly appointed Cabinet Secretary for Education in the Scottish Government. Obviously, it was only appointed on... Uh, the election of Hamza Yusuf uh, to first minister earlier this week. So we're we're still a bit work in progress on that, but that's likely to be either uh, later Sunday afternoon or Monday morning. Thanks, Chris. 
And then other sessions you get involved in, which I reference. Fringe meetings take place on Saturday and Sunday at the end of the formal session. So they cover all sorts of uh, different educational, um, broader education issues that you may be interested in. So we've got fringe meetings on how we how important it is to protect arts and creativity in the curriculum and in schools. Um, a session on tackling sexual harassment and misogyny, one on period dignity, various campaigns of the NHBT. So there are sessions there you can attend. They're all detailed on the NHBT app, uh, one on long COVID as well, and international, a meeting for international uh, representatives as well. So those are taking place. The sound bites are other, another kind of informal session where you don't get a chance to debate and speak in quite the same way. And I should say the fringe meetings are a good place to speak. If you perhaps are nervous about speaking to the whole of conference, it's a good place to uh, take part in various debates, uh, which don't lead to formal policy, but obviously develop thinking in, in the areas they're focused on. Um, the sound bites are actually um, sessions where you put headset on, but you listen to somebody speaking live about a particular topic. Um, some of these are around um, NHBT focused issues, so one on defending the right to strike, one on tackling anti-racism and Islamophobia. Uh, other ones are focused very much on uh, wellness sessions that happen at that area, so not formally sound bites, but we've got wellness sessions that take place in the exhibition area at lunchtime. So I did uh, joke earlier, you might want to do a wellness session after um, after a morning of rules debate, um, and there are ones taking place about calmness, other points, there are seated exercises, so things you can do that will help um, with a broader kind of well-being um, of yourself while you're at annual conference. In the exhibition area, as well as those sessions I just referenced, there's a whole range of exhibitors and partners organisations we work with, so various campaigning organisations that we affiliate to or support, um, other organisations, um, that are aligned with the NHBT. Um, the NHBT stands in there as well, so around our own campaigns. But there's also some um, fairly fun activities. So I think there's a virtual, would you call it a virtual reality um, machine that you machine, is that what it's called? Game yeah. that you can engage with, <laughs> machine, uh, game that you can engage with. There's also um, other interactive things you can do over the weekend. There's also areas where you could just charge your mobile devices or you can go and sit quietly or you can go and sit with colleagues from your local association and chat. So the whole exhibition area is really a chance to um, well, relax and just engage with other representatives um, outside of the formal conference sessions. Um, International Workers Memorial Day as well, there'll be uh, ribbons on sale um, in the exhibition area uh, and various things taking place to commemorate that as well. Um, there's no social events actually in the exhibition, well there is, there's a welcome event on Friday night in the exhibition area, but it's probably just worth mentioning there are other social events that you might want to engage with. So various um, regions and uh, nations have um, social events. I seem to recall that on the Friday evening after the welcome event, there's a Celtic Fringe social event, I think, um, and I know that the Eastern region, for example, has a, has an event, I think, on the Saturday night. You'll, you'll know about these if, you're in, if your region is holding an event. Um, they're just ones from memory I remember seeing on a, on, on, on a list. So various social events and obviously socialising with your local associations is really important. So I think that brings us to the end of the um, presentation. I don't know if there's stuff that you wanted to add, Chris, to any of that. No, I don't think so. I think yeah, explore the app. Um, there's lots of details on there, you know, lots more that we couldn't go into any depth in here and now. So, for example, we found a provider called Invisible Cities who will offer walking tours of Glasgow at the end of the day and a chance to sort of relax and unwind. Um, there's lots of different elements of the exhibition. There's lots of debate going on, an opportunity to talk to like minded colleagues across the country. I think you. Know, Far be it from you, for me or Phil, to suggest that uh, anything other than the debates that happen on the main stage of conference, uh, sort of the the key element of it. But the feedback we invariably get is way beyond any policy making process. The opportunity for teachers and teacher trade unions to come together to share their experiences, sometimes to find out they're not the only person experiencing um, the the problems that they are within their school or within their classroom to build contacts that prove useful in future to learn about organizing skills or policy areas it's all part of the conference experience so throw yourself at it make the most of it um and yeah enjoy your your four days thanks for that and just to say one thing about this i can see this question in the chat chris about bridget phillips and when she's speaking again just to say 
the 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 actual experience of conference, particularly like getting around the motion debates. When you explain the standing orders, it's incredibly dull uh, and potentially quite difficult to get head around. Whereas actually, when you're there. You only need to listen to about an hour and a half of debate and things very quickly fall into place about how that works, about how the speaking engagements work, about how motions are, are passed, about how amendments are considered. And the president takes conference through that as well as they chair the event over the three and a half days. So I so say there's nothing there's nothing really like being there to get the feel for it. But what we hope to do. Uh, with this session is just to give people some of the background. As Chris said, definitely have a look around the app before you go. Uh, you can message colleagues in the app so you can look for people from other from your association if you don't know anyone. You can contact people through that. Uh, you can switch off, I think, the ability to be messaged if you'd rather not be. Um, so that's there for you as well. But I mean, people are listed as staff as well. And I'm sure that, you know, any members of staff, certainly I need to, I tried to put my phone on the other day and realised I didn't have an update one on my phone. So <laughs> uh, my work phone. So, uh, but you will see that you can contact me and Chris by all means on through the app if you've got any questions or look out for us at conference. All of the, your, when you get your credentials, everyone has slightly different colour credentials. I can't, I can't remember what colour staff, the staff badges will be this year but they will all have the same colour. So when you see a staff badge, once you can see one, you can approach any member of staff when you're there and they'll be able to help you and point you in the right direction with anything you need. So I can see Chris has updated the chat now with the speaking slots as well. It's perfect timing. So if there's any other questions, then by all means indicate, you can, you, we can bring you in, or if you just want to ask a question in the Q&A or the chat, that's fine. Otherwise we'll pause there slightly ahead of time. Um, you're obviously welcome to come and meet people at the getting to getting the most out of the conference session on Thursday. Otherwise, we'll see many of you um, on Friday morning when we start conference. I think, Chris, you put those comments in to host some panelists rather than everyone. OK. Um we I can run through them again. It's probably uh, easier. So um, the first speaker will be uh, Paul Novak, uh, General Secretary to TUC, and that is at uh, ten thirty on Saturday. So at the end of the first public session. The second one uh, will be um, David Edwards, and that will be about two fifteen on the Saturday afternoon, uh, so not long after the start of the afternoon session. And then Bridget Phillipson will be at the end of the first set motion on uh, Sunday afternoon, so somewhere between 2.45 and 3 o'clock. Perfect, and I repasted them in. So thanks, everybody. Um, look forward to seeing you at conference. Look forward to seeing all of you in Glasgow in a few days' time. Cool. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.